You know how dads are sort of famous for telling corny jokes? Yeah, you mean the one about... No, 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 no. stop right there. Because it's Mother's Day weekend, so I thought like maybe it should be my turn to tell the corny jokes. Okay, what do you got? Uh, well, it's worship, and so I thought I should tell some Bible-based jokes that are just really going to knock you out. Go for it. Okay, knock, knock. Who's there? Heaven. Heaven who? Haven't seen you in weeks. That's not true. You see me every day. <laughs> oh, you got me there. Okay, we'll try this one. Knock, knock. Who's there? Leah. Leah who? Leah, the door open, then I won't have to knock so loud. Oh. All right, I've got one. <laughs> okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Noah. Noah who? Noah, anyone who has any good knock, knock jokes? Yeah, I think I do. Hey, Lou, knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo who? Don't cry, it's just a joke. Ah, good one, Decky. Knock, knock. Who's there? Figs. Figs who? Think it's your doorbell because it's not working. Hey, Grace. Hey, what? Knock, knock. Who's there? Theodore. Theodore who? Theodore is stuck and it won't open. It's knock, knock. Who's there? Who's there? Doris. Doris who? Doris always come on in. Knock, knock. <laughs> Who's there? Isabel. Isabel who? Is it on easy for the Let's pray. God, take our silly and our grateful and our worried and our tearful and open your heart to receive these things today. Embrace us with your peace. Amen. Welcome to worship at Grandview. It's great to be together and one way we let one another know that we're here is by leaving comments. Uh, that's part of the delight of being together and knowing that the Spirit is moving among us. I uh, want to tell you that one of the most thoughtful comments we've had recognizes that truth that people really matter. Um, recognizes that there are behind the scenes people who are part of making worship happen. So I want to give a shout out to Chad Thomas and to the mother-daughter team of Beth and Paige Wagner who were instrumental in today's service. Now at Grandview we don't tend to make a huge deal about Mother's Day. Um, it's a secular commercial holiday that comes with a lot of mixed emotions for uh, women, for non-binary people, for a whole bunch of reasons. And so we tend to celebrate God's love in more inclusive ways at Grandview all year long. Um, but that being said, if you are a brand new mom or a new parent this year, hey, we rejoice with you. 
And if you are a mom who is struggling right now with some added responsibilities, including maybe teaching kids at home um, or working at a very risky job outside the home and trying to keep everybody safe, we are rooting for you. And if we can make that easier, we want to do that. Um, if you are a grieving person right now, grieving for, say, a mom or an aunt or some woman, some non-binary person who's been particularly significant in your life, we know that this is tough and we are praying for you. And if you are grieving for a child or for the absence of a child, we are so sorry. This is probably going to be a really rough week. And we do really want you to know that we are praying for you. We don't do a lot of joy and concern sharing here because it's just, you know, open to the whole wide, wide world. So the way we're doing that now is in the more intimate setting of um, our Wednesday evening prayer meeting. If you want to come to that small group meeting and just have a more uh, quiet opportunity to rejoice, to mourn, to be with other people who are supportive, to pray for other people too. It's a great opportunity to do that, and I invite you to connect to it by uh, connecting to Pastor Jane Dutton. You can look her up on the staff page of our website. Uh, next week, I want to tell you we're going to be celebrating graduates um, who are certainly having a very different kind of experience this year. We're going to be doing that in a variety of ways, but that'll be part of our worship next week. If uh, you've been a part of Grandview and are celebrating a graduation this year, we want to make sure we know about that so that we can be uh, celebrating you in some very special ways this coming year. So send us a, a text or an email. Or let us know um, where you're graduating from and all the details about that. This morning I'm reading from Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5, then verses 15 and 16. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Free me from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Redeem me, O Lord, with God of truth. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from my enemies and from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. It's a youth back for another chosen sermon. And we're going to start off this beautiful morning with a great God filled good morning. So on the count of three, we all know the drill. We're going to say it together. One, two, three. Good, good morning. morning. So today we are going to be sharing some pages out of a book recommendation from Sydney Cummings. Her and her husband Dick used to teach Sunday school classes in the preschool room for a long time. Hello. You started at the beginning, which is impressive. I usually start in the middle and never read introductions. It's surprising that I made a book because I'm not good at reading them. The truth is, I need pictures. They're like islands, places to get to in a sea of words. This book is for everyone. Whether you are 80 or 8, I feel like I'm both sometimes. I'd like it to be one you can dip into anywhere, anytime. Start in the middle, if you like. Scribble on it, crease the corners, and leave it well thumbed. What do you want to be when you grow up? Kind, said the boy. So today I chose this page to read out of the book because no matter how old you are or how young you are, the one thing that you have complete control over in life is how you treat other people. And it's really important to live every day treating others with kindness the way Jesus did. And through the way you act and love other people, it's just one of the many ways that you can be God's hands and feet on earth. What do you think success is, asked the boy. To love, said them all. Now, while I'm on a journey to succeed, I'm either doing it to make others happy or sometimes myself happy. And when you're giving other people happiness, you're giving them love. And I think that's what success is all about. What do you think the biggest waste of time is? Comparing yourself to others, said them all. When you compare yourself to others, you're making yourself non-unique. 
You're making yourself try to fit in. But that's not what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus wants us to be unique and to be different. And that's totally okay. Because being different makes ourselves happy and sometimes make others around us happy. And if we can do that, that's love. Often the hardest person to forgive is yourself. We all make mistakes and sometimes it's hard to come to terms with ourselves. But we need to be able to learn to forgive ourselves because we aren't perfect. And even though it's hard, sometimes we just have to tell ourselves that, that we aren't perfect and we all make mistakes. What's the bravest thing you've ever said? Asked the boy. Help, said the horse. Okay, guys, I hope you all learned something from today. Now, he wants to close us out in a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this life you have given each and every single one of us. And we pray that every day you help us live a life where our actions show your love to other people. Amen. Amen. Chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Also trust in me. My Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, then that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing this work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. 
In reading this passage from John, I'm really struck by the idea of many rooms. That's the thing that really grabbed me, the idea of many rooms. When I was growing up, I'd been taught that the better my behavior was, the better Christian I was, the larger my mansion was going to be in heaven. Or I'd have lots of jewels in my crown if I did good things here. I mean, that sounds pretty great. Well, I don't know about you, but when I think of many rooms right now and since the beginning of March, and how we are separated from one another by physical barriers, such as rooms and walls and doors and face masks and gloves and six feet. It actually doesn't sound all that great. And in reading this gospel lesson, and you see, we can't help but read the Bible from a particular time and space and place. So we're reading the Bible right now in the middle of a pandemic. My initial response was, the last thing I want is more rooms. I'd like to be in one room, say like a sanctuary on a Sunday morning. Now that sounds like a little bit of heaven. So I'm in the Father and the Father is in me. And if you know me, then you'll know my Father. And if you know me, then you'll do even more here than I've done. That's Jesus. So all of this Father, Jesus, disciples, it's all intertwined and it's all interconnected. The whole purpose of Jesus's mission, his bodily mission on earth, was to bring life to the world. The commentary, Feasting on the Word, says this. The life promised by Jesus to his disciples was eternal life, which is participation in the very being of God. Participation in the very nature of God is life and is eternal. So we're in it right now. We are in what's eternal. We're in connection with God and we are participating with God now and with each other. So what we do right now really does matter and it has eternal consequences. Now, being together, this connection, I miss the face-to-faceness of being together. I miss visiting in person. I miss the handshake or the hand hold. I miss that Marge Cumston hug. I miss eye contact. I miss smells and sounds. The kids running through the gathering space and up and over the furniture. I miss the aliveness of love and laughter and music and voices and tears that are so pure. All this not filtered through a phone or a computer. I miss the fleshiness, the bodiliness of being together. And yet there's also comfort in knowing that we are still connected and we've been in this connection with God all along. We can even see it in Genesis. Nadia Boltz Weber, in her book, Shameless, writes this. In our beginning, God was maybe bored and a little lonely. So God created a terrifyingly vast universe, which included the earth. The earth, our speck of life, was just a void. And this great nothingness was super dark. Before creation, all there was was God. So in order to bring the world into being, God had to kind of scoot over. To bring the world into being, God chose to take up less space. You know, to make room. So before God spoke the world into being, God scooted over. God wanted to share like the kind-faced woman on the subway who takes her handbag, her handbag onto her lap so that there's room for you to sit next to her. She didn't have to do it, but that's just who she is. The kind-faced subway lady's nature is that she makes room for others. 
the kind-faced subway lady moving her purse out of the way, making room, scooting over, sharing, inviting. This time that we're in right now, it actually feels a little bit like Advent, a time of preparation for birth or a rebirth, which is sort of interesting because, you know, today's Mother's Day. Now, I don't think that we're ever going to go back to normal as in the way things were, or even accept this new normal as the way things will be. See, we have a time and a chance to dream and to create and to prepare and to evolve into a better normal. Jesus did not fight empire with violence or the sword. He did it by disrupting business as usual, by disrupting what was normal day-to-day -day life. Jesus offered a better normal, a better normal. A better normal looks up and sees blue skies. We've seen stunningly beautiful photos from around the world. The earth breathes better when we get out of the way. Okay, maybe we haven't done it voluntarily, but look what's happened when we scooted over, when we took a break from all that we humans do that pollutes and damages creation. We've had some rebirth right in front of us. A better normal takes a good long look at how images of God, all people, all around us have been barred from opportunity, civil rights, and dignity. A wise pastor said in a Zoom call I was on last week, you know, we're all in the same storm, but we are not in the same boat. Most essential workers are people of color and women. And we know that women aren't paid on par with men. We know that communities of color are harder hit by COVID. We know that our most vulnerable communities have higher infection rates and death rates. A better normal changes that. A better normal demands it. Now, big mansions and lots of jewels, now that just doesn't sound like Jesus. The last shall be first and the first shall be last is outright scooting me out from the front of the line, from the head start that I've had from the start. It's a decentering, and that's humbling. And Jesus calls us to do something better. And I'm excited about the possibility of a better normal. And I'm excited that Grandview has been working at a better normal for a long time. We just started an initiative to learn Spanish. Just this past week, 23 folks started the process of learning a new language so that we can become better neighbors. So instead of expecting others to learn our language, we're scooting over to say, let us learn your language because we want to be better neighbors to you. We're the ones who have to change. Now we're in this liminal moment right now in this pandemic. Another way to say it is that we're in a doorway moment. Not quite here and not quite there, not quite out and not quite in, we're in between. It's a strange time of space and uncertainty and it is difficult. It is really difficult. Do we go out? Do we stay in? And the essential workers must be asking the same things. Do you folks stay in or do you come out? And I can't help but think, this is what the disciples were feeling, This all this uncertainty. Now, Jesus, wait, 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 wait. Where are you going? And Jesus says, I'm off to prepare some rooms. You stay here. Keep working for the better normal. And don't be troubled. I'm, I'm coming back. And then maybe Thomas is like, what? what, what? Jesus says, I am life. You know me, I know you, I know God and you know God. We're connected, we're together. We've been like this all along. The book from the children's message this morning, The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse. Ah, it's just filled with wonder, 
Wonder and Wonderful Words, a book that teaches about friendship among and between unlikely friends, friends that make room for one another. Well, what will open the door? What will move us from this liminal space? What will give us courage to step over and scoot over and invite in and make room is love. It's love. It's love. The gospel, the good news, it always goes back to love. And we will love being physically together again, face to face again, eventually. To be enveloped in that Marge Cumston hug or the sounds of children running through the gathering space and ah, oh, the live music. And there will be room for that. And there will be room for so much more and so many more as we create and live into a better normal. Ah, oh, let it be so. Amen. Repeating that you'll never fall in love when everybody keeps retreating, but you can't seem to get enough. Let my love open the door, let my love open the door, let my love open the door to your heart. When everything feels all over When everybody seems unkind I'll give you a four-leaf clover Take all the worry out of your mind Let my love open the door Let my love open the door Let my love open the door To your heart to receive the blessing. 
in these uncertain times, as you stand in doorways and liminal spaces, may you know and feel the love of God, of Jesus, and one another today, tomorrow, until we can meet again in person and beyond that. Amen.